Welcome back to another episode of Alpine Garage. Today we're going to be talking about headers. Welcome back to another episode of Alpine Garage. I'm Chris and we are building a 1973 Ford Bronco. And we're also building a 1974, but today we're just going to be talking about this particular one. Now this engine is a 1997 Explorer engine. We bored it out to a 347. We did our own porting work on the heads and the intake. So there's quite a bit more airflow in this engine now. And we need to upgrade the factory Explorer headers to something that is a little more reasonable. Now, one of the challenges that we have is the fact that we have 4R70W transmission in this Bronco. And for those of you who have been running automatic transmissions, especially modern ones, you know they take up a quite a bit of what already narrow space there is between those frame rails. We tried to find some headers that I, I had heard through the grapevine that there were some headers that were specifically built for a 302 and a 4R70W or AOD, but after looking at I couldn't find them. So what we decided to do, we decided to go with some Scott Drake shorty headers. Now the nice thing about these is I didn't get the chrome and I didn't get the ceramic. I wanted something just simple and expensive that is much better than the factory. Let's talk a little bit about this header. So this is a Scott Drake shorty header. I purchased them for about $275, $272. Uh, they were, uh, you can get them on Amazon, which is where we got them from. And they actually ship from Holly. So when you order them through Amazon, at least the link I'm gonna put in the description, it actually comes from Holly. And you know, they're, they're pretty clean. The welds are not the best welds, but then again, you know, you get what you pay for kind of thing. But the nice thing about it is these are one and a half inch tubes with a two and a half inch collector. Now, that isn't saying much other than this is pretty much a standard shorty header. The thing that I liked about it is that if you look at, if you look at the quality right here, the quality in the welding and the quality in the tube, it's actually not bad. I want to go through and clearance these just a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to because they're welded from the inside and I don't want to weaken that weld any. There are a couple of small spots that I'll probably just take a, take a burr to just to clean it up a little bit. But other than that, they actually look really nice. Now, if you look at the volume right here, because we clearanced, we actually ported our heads. So, they, so the exhaust runner is quite a bit wider and quite a bit longer than it was for stock. So this will help kind of capture that. Even though they're shorty headers, they actually have quite a long bit of pipe here. So I think that the reversion is going to be limited with these. And you know, shorty headers are always good for torque. At least that's what everybody says. So I think we're pretty good there. Now, this said, this is about a $300 upgrade. Now let's look at what came on the Explorer and the reason why we were changing it out. All right, we're gonna set that down. And I'm gonna show you, this is the, this is one, side of the exhaust for the Ford Explorer with the 5.0 in it. And you're gonna notice that two of the exhaust ports actually go up and around, and then they connect with the other two. So when you look inside this header tube, it actually goes both directions. And there's nothing in there that actually directs it down. So when I'm thinking about it, exhaust is coming through here and it gets split. Some of it goes up, some of it goes down. I can't imagine how this was ever a good idea, but I know they were limited for space. Uh, but look at the size of this port. I mean, I can barely, I can't even stick my finger in there without hitting the sidewalls. So literally it is the width of my finger on the inside of this tube. So we are going from that, which is probably three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half so we're looking at doubling the size of the header. Not to mention with the confusion that's going on here and the fact that these tubes have like four or five pinch points all the way around them, even all the way down to the bottom here, you'll see how they pinch pointed there as well. There is no doubt that this engine, which pumped out about 230 horsepower in an Explorer is gonna put out, even if it was just a stock motor, you get an extra 15 horsepower out of that easily. Now, with a 347, because we've punched it out, we're just trying not to reduce the power potential of this motor, especially the torque potential. And I think these headers are the right way to go. So I'm gonna drop this and we'll talk about these headers a little bit more. Another nice thing about this is that I'm not gonna need gaskets for this. I'm not a big fan of headers that require gaskets. This being a ball and socket style, as you can see here, uh, will help seal really well. And then if you'll notice on the collector tube right here, 
we've actually got an O2 sensor port right there already built in. So we don't have to drill and put one of those little flanges around it. So, and we are going to be running EFI in this. Obviously we're using the, the factory Ford EFI. So I am going to need to have front oxygen sensors in this thing. So that made it even more attractive. And even more attractive than that is it came with its own header gaskets, which I already had, but you know, there you go. So we got header gaskets and it came with some really nice Chrome hardware as well. So you get all of that. Basically it's a full header system with the bolts and, and everything that you need to put it together for under $300. So that's the reason why we went with it. Now this is the biggest problem that you have with a Bronco when you're trying to put headers in it and you're using a very wide automatic transmission like a 4 70W is you've got less than six inches of room right here to run the header down and underneath and through. And trying to get another set of headers on the 74 that we're rebuilding or we have a C6 transmission in there which really is not a whole lot narrower than this and we used a standard set of Bronco headers, and I'm telling you, it was a pain in the rear end. We had to cut the flanges and, and do all kinds of crazy stuff to get the headers in there, and I didn't want to do that on this one. Long tube headers are known for better horsepower. Uh, short tube headers, as long as they are uh, shorty headers, as long as they're built correctly, and there's not a lot of sharp angles in them, and they're not super tight, can still produce a lot of power, and they're really kind of known for the torque anyway. So, but when we look at the way that this thing fits, this side fits really nicely so it's going to go on right about there that's exactly where it's going to be and the collector is about a half an inch from the frame so i won't have to do you can see it right there collector is about a half an inch from the frame so i won't have to do any modification there at least i hope i won't and then i'm going to run that exhaust straight down underneath and do some custom bending on some tubing we're going to make our own exhaust so that's going to be fun so that's one side now the other side is a little bit more tricky. Now this header actually doesn't fit too badly. I'm gonna put it in there, right about there. But you'll notice that the way that this proportioning valve is coming off of here with this uh, with this brake line, I'm gonna have to rebend this, which is not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rebend this, have this come straight out up and in here instead of coming at a dog leg like this. So not a big deal, and if you see where the collector actually dumps down there, you got tons of room down there, that won't be a problem. So, so far, this looks like a great fit. And fast forward, here they are inside the frame here. You can see tons of room. And on the opposite side right here, we also have tons of room. Uh, I have not re-bent this yet. You can see how far it is away. The brake line is away from the header, so we're probably going to be fine there. Put a little bit of that aluminized heat protection on that brake line to keep that from getting any hotter. And then we have uh, several inches there to play with for the exhaust. So the build is coming together nicely. Those headers really made a difference for me. I was actually getting a little bit nervous about that. So that's squared away. Thanks for hanging out with us. That is a wrap from Alpine Garage. Stick around. We're going to continue building this 73 Bronco.